If we're going to be a mature nation, we need to have mature conversations, and that includes conversations about the past. Uh, we like happy history in this country, history that can be celebrated in parades and smug conversations. But if we're going to be, as President Reagan talked about, that city uh, on the top of the hill, we have to be honest about who we were, and we have to be honest about who we are. It brings me no pleasure to say that there's not a single object in the Jim Crow Museum that's not currently being made. The Jim Crow Museum is located at Fair State University. We recognized years ago that not everyone was gonna to come to Big Rapids, so we started creating traveling exhibits. My name is David Pilgrim. I am the founder and director of the Jim Crow Museum. This is our most extensive traveling exhibit, and it actually mirrors, in some ways, the new museum that we're gonna create in 2025. Uh, we do have, by the way, a virtual museum, which people can visit. But this is our way of trying to do in the larger public what we do at Beth Ferris, which is create spaces where people can have intelligent, nuanced conversations about race, race relations, and racism. So we believe that uh, the true value, or a value, of the, of the traveling exhibit at Grand Rapids is that we can continue what is a tradition of good conversations about race in this city. I'm really excited because this is a critical time for us in our journey, the museum's journey. On the one hand, we release this comprehensive, well thought out, 100 plus piece uh, traveling exhibit, which is being shown at, uh, displayed at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. But it's also a time when we are moving forward toward creating a new facility at Fair State, which will be 10 times the size of the ones we have, which will allow us the space to tell stories we can't tell right now. Stories about civil rights and Jim Crow in Michigan. Uh, stories about how African Americans use their activism and their achievements to push back against Jim Crow. But also, and the most important story of all in my mind, and that is, where do we need to go as a nation? Uh, where do we as individuals, communities, and others need to go to address race relations in this country? We're an anti-racism facility, right? And I think the closer people get to our work, the more they appreciate our work and understand it. Well, I should say understand and then appreciate. When we're just a concept, I'm talking now about the Jim Crow Museum. When we're just a concept, then people vet that through their own racial lens, right? And they're like, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea to be putting racist images up. That's just gonna remind us of bad things. But when people see the work, when they come and they, they, they either come to Big Rapids and look at our main facility, or they come to a traveling exhibit like this, then they get it, right? They understand that this is, this is handled with care. It's not soft peddled in any way, but it's handled with care. And I really wanna emphasize this, that, that a big part of the story we tell is, is that this is not a shrine to racism. This is a shrine to the resiliency of African-Americans in particular and American democracy in general. All right, because we can get there. I really believe we can be that city upon the hill if we stop doing some of the things we're doing as a country right now. The, the purpose of studying the past is not to make you feel good or bad, it's to have a, a, a more accurate understanding of the past, and this does this. Um, we are, as a nation, more democratic and more egalitarian than we've ever been, but those ideas from that period, they're not all dead and we live also in the residue of Jim Crow. Okay, so this is, this is where we start the exhibit. It's called Overcoming Hateful Things, Stories from the Jim Crow Museum of Racist Imagery. And, and the reason why we have this overcoming pasted on here is because a lot of these objects and, 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 and artifacts here are hateful things. But the story that we want to tell is resiliency and overcoming and, and, and achieving despite resistance. And so that's why this, the, it's called overcoming hateful things. So this is where people start at the exhibit. And then we go over here and we have an intro film. All right, so this intro film is kind of, kind, kind of orients people with the material that we're going to talk about here, uh, the Jim Crow period. And, and so from Thomas Rice, the, the, the father of minstrelsy, to the Jim Crow as a system and as laws. And so there's an intro film here that orients people with what they're gonna see in, the, in the, the rest of the exhibit. And so this shows how blackface minstrelsy went from the stage or, or went from uh, uh, the, the big stage to then local, local troops 
and, and areas in the newspaper and Al Jolson and to the radio and how the, the, the concept of blackface minstrelsy expanded from Thomas Rice to then an everyday type of form of entertainment. So then this is kind of where we talk about the laws and how, how the, the concept of Jim Crow laws have, have been a part of our systems for hundreds of years. And so we have these, these little flip, flip books that kind of give laws that were on the books from the 1600s all the way up to the uh, 1800s, you know, restricting the use of, of, of dogs, even for African Americans couldn't own dogs. And so we have, these are pre-Jim um, Crow era, but then we go up into the Jim Crow era with different types of laws and kind of just showing the, the breadth of the codes and the laws that were codified on the books. All right, so then this section, this is where we're, where we're showing more of the pushback. So wherever we, we kind of see the negative aspects of the Jim Crow period and the Jim Crow system, you'll see the pushback. So this is fighting Jim Crow laws. And so we have examples of some some court cases that were direct assault and affront to the Jim Crow laws that, that restricted African Americans from, from freedoms that they were entitled to. Another aspect of pushback is, is we want to show how people saw themselves. And so we, we see a lot of these negative imagery at the, at, in the museum, but black folks didn't see themselves that way. So, so we're showing people how they saw themselves. You know, you see yourselves as, as a father holding a baby. You see yourselves as, as a person going to school, being in education as, as a nurse. So African Americans didn't see themselves as the caricatures and the stereotypes that they were being portrayed as. And so we want to definitely show that pushback. So in, in, ma in many places here at the museum, we show what a lot of the, the, the most popular Jim Crow caricatures were. And, and, and there's a lot of um, grotesque ones and, and and caricatures are just the representations or false representations of, of what people look like and their characteristics. And stereotypes are how are, are the acts and the behaviors associated with those caricatures. So we have a, a myriad of the caricatures that were popular in, in America at, during this time. And so we show a lot of those in their context. But again, we show the pushback of it throughout the whole, the whole system of Jim Crow. So Jim Crow and the system couldn't have happened or, or sustained itself without violence. And it's either the, the threat of violence or actual violence. And so this is, this is a, a interactive map that we have here where we're, it's definitely not showing all the acts of violence in the United States during this Jim Crow period, but it gives you a taste of some of the instances that happened throughout the country. So you can just touch on the state and get more information about, about a lynching or about a race war, race riot, I guess, race massacre, the Tulsa massacre, for instance. So we have a lot of these things. And this, this is going to be a growing database as we continue to add stuff to this. And so, but again, it's an interactive. So Aunt Jemima is, is, a, is a controversial thing. There's a lot of people who, who, who when they see Aunt Jemima, they're reminded of, of good times with their family and, and happy times and, and pancake, which, which is fine, I guess. But the reality is, is she was based off of a racist, a racial, stereotype um, and, and so we show the history of the branding of Aunt Jemima from the beginning to now the the rebranding of Pearl Mill Company um, so it's it's it, it's a legacy of the Jim Crow era and and it's quite frankly it's good that it's it's changed now um, it's been a long time coming but but we're happy that it has changed surrounding this area where, where we're showing caricatures and we're showing this negative these negative imagery of African Americans, we're also showing pushback. So we're showing, again, how black people saw themselves as not Jim Crow, as not these caricatures. You know, that you have children playing and happy and learning. You have musicians, you have dancers, you just have people living their lives. And that's, that's one of the strongest pushbacks to Jim Crow, is people living lives with dignity. So these are, are interactives where people can kind of get a story about, about why I collect. So Dr. Pilgrim has an uh, interview about why he started collecting the, the objects. We have, um, let me pause that. We have artifact explorers right here where you can kind of get more information about the artifacts that you will see that are on display. And then we have other uh, videos that show representations in film, on television, in the radio or on the radio, and on cartoons and in newspapers. So there's, there's videos and uh, multimedia experiences that, that, that visitors will have here as well. 
Okay, so the last part of the, of the experience, and, and again, we just kind of did a cursory walkthrough, is, is an is a interactive wall here where people can write on the wall about how they can get involved and how they can make the world better. We have some resources that are just general resources that people can, can get involved with, with QR codes, but also make a statement about how you're going to get involved and change and, 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 and change the attitudes and negative um, thoughts and, and, and and beliefs that we have about each other and how can we come together as opposed to how you know how are we separate how are we different so that's kind of our challenge to to the visitors here um, and we have we'll have more resources that other people can from books from the kent, kent county library as well so the museum is scheduled to be in the the, the uh, grand rapids public museum from june 3rd to september the 3rd and then we're looking at a venue and somewhere on the southeast side of the state but we've, we are working with a, con a company called Cultural Troll, which is helping us find venues. It just sounds so trite to say this, but I'm an educator, right? And the people who design this, my team, we're all educators. We believe in the triumph of dialogue. We don't believe there's conversations you shouldn't have, right? We, we don't believe that uh, not talking about something makes it better. It's not an in-your-face kind of thing, as, uh, although it probably looks like that from the outside. What it is is this is our honest attempt to get people to have those discussions we want them to have. So I don't have a lot in common with H. Ross Perot, but you know that quote from H. Ross Perot that says the activist is not the man who says the river is dirty, the activist is the man who cleans the river. I wish he had not used gendered language, by the way. I wish he had just said the person. But anyway, our pant legs are wet. I mean, this is the way we are trying to address uh, a racism in this country. I challenge others to come look at the way we're doing it, and I challenge them to also themselves to become active. You know, this is, by the way, the legacy of our founder, Woodbridge Nathan Ferris. And I think that if he were here, given the fact that he was a racial justice advocate before that was even a real thing, I think he would be proud of this work. I am.